Another episode of Spotlight on Awesomeness. I tell you what, this never gets old. I'll probably be 80 years old and still doing this. I hope, maybe. We'll see. But, uh, you know, I certainly wish I could. Uh, so we're going to get on with today's episode. Today I have with me my friend DeAndre Armstrong. I've known this guy for nine years now, I think. Yep. Nine years. Um, you know, it's funny when you meet people, the, the things that you think, the things that go through your head, and the things that make you go, I like this person. <laughs> um, this was actually uh, the first black guy I ever met with blue hair and a lip piercing. And I'm like, you know what? I want to know this guy. I want to know what's ticking in his head. You know? <laughs> and so I was like, let me talk to this guy. And so we got to talk and found out we had a lot in common, video games and football, even though we disagree on our, our teams. <laughs> You know, and, you know, but that's the cool thing about people is just because you're not exactly like somebody, you can still be friends with them. You can still be cool, you know, and it, it leads to a lot of interesting discussions, you know, and, and they add flair to your life. You know, it would, it'd be boring if everybody was all the same because, I mean, I love Whataburgers, but every once in a while you want a Big Mac too. So, uh, DeAndre, I'll let you open up. You know, I was looking at it a little a little writing along your name, the yeah. Atlanta Falcons thing. That's just embarrassing. How, how could you do that to me? Really? Well, I was trying to juxtapose you. Okay, look, okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off. You said do not mention this team. You said don't say anything. So I wasn't. I followed your rules. Well, you know what? I made, I made a spot on change because in the last episode, I, I, I happened to stumble out and say Florida Gators. So I figured since I'd already used profanity that the, the Ravens are nowhere near. I mean, they're not even our division. So, you know, we, you, you can say Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I'm touched. This guy. Give me a moment. Just a moment. Get in touch. Woosah. 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 Okay. <laughs> nice. The double woosah. Double woosah. Now, this guy, he is an amazing artist, amazing artist. Uh, he, he does, uh, let's see, painting, uh, drawing, etching. 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 Uh, he did this here glass for me, my Comicus Prime glass that I just got. He actually, did, uh, he actually did a Hello Kitty one for my girlfriend a while back, and Georgiana loved it. She absolutely loved it. Um, so we're, we're going to do the... Uh, the regular part of the show where we start going through the pictures. There's the Cobacus Prime. Looks awesome. It does. Well, I mean, you did it. Binky's a nerd. I was going to get this out here, but that was actually a cool design. I've never done a Star Trek design. That was a first. It was. So. He, he did that for my brother. Um, congratulations. You've seen your birthday present. Now, uh, his birthday's uh, about, <laughs> let's see, what's the day? The 12th, I think. I don't know. I don't Something know. like that. Well, it's about three weeks away. Okay. So, uh, August 7th at any rate. <laughs> so, I'm sure he'll love that. This is actually one of the new glasses that we're carrying. I have yet to price it. It's color at the bottom and it's going to be fully customized. This one's feminine. All of them are going to be feminine. Butterflies, hearts, love symbols. Not saying that guys don't like that, but for the most part. You got to take care of the ladies. Yes, got to take care of the ladies. That's my own glass. You see the Seminole Spear? Fear the Spear? I don't. You should because you're a Georgia Bulldog. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> SEC, thank you. Now, I, I will chop, but uh, it'll be at a Braves game. Oh, look, there's another, that's my other one. That's a green one, and it's done in flowers, which I might actually keep that. It's supposed to be a gift for my girlfriend, but she might not get it. Uh-oh. Hey. Da -da -da. War. Oh, no. This what is, is going on with this picture? I already know, but you got to tell the people at home. This is me and my stepdaughter, Paige. Uh, she was going to prom, and I wanted to do the whole, you're not taking my daughter anywhere. 
still yeah. cleaning this gun. Yes, I'm still cleaning this gun, <laughs> and they move a lot faster after 10. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I like that. But we were operator ready, as you see. <laughs> operator ready. Oh, look, Hello Kitty. That's the one you did for Gigi, right? That was actually possibly one of the hardest glasses I've done. Really? You'd be amazed. It's simple design, but it was hard. I, there's no way to explain it. Well, we certainly appreciate the hard work that you put into it. Yeah, I like the fact that my computer is in the background there. All right, you got to show it off. Another shot at the Copicus Prime. Which that one turned out a lot better. It's all about it. It's going to be good. Getting ready for my brother's wedding. You see me and my lovely girlfriend, Misty Hayes, who is a big influence on what I do. She is the one who pushed me and kept me going. You know, my mama always said behind every good man, there's an even better woman spurring him to up his game. You see her. She's close, re close combat ready. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. That's a very nice picture of you guys. That woman right there has changed my life, you know. Probably the first time I've actually been happy with somebody. And a good woman will. A very good woman. A good woman will. Yeah, the mall doesn't know, but that's my new car. <laughs> but they will. <laughs> if they catch me. If they catch you. If they catch me. They'll know it's someone's new car. Yeah, that's my new car. Maybe not necessarily. See them new. rims? I keep them clean. Shiny. She, my girlfriend called me a loser in the middle of the store. So I became Tim Tebow. <laughs> Burn. Sorry, Gator fans. I Burn. Hate this is like Gator hating day. You know, I, I, I filmed the episode before with my buddy Chris Harrison, and uh, <laughs> you know we were Gator hating on that one too. I, I respect Tebow. Um, he, he has an, he, you know, he has good ability, and I respect his, uh, I respect his abortion stance. You know, a lot of people don't agree, but you know that's how I agree because I had a similar, you know, situation yeah. with him. Right. You know, so I guess to me it's on a different level. You know, I respect him there, but did I like him as a player? No. no. He would have been a great player as a tight end. He would have, honestly, because um, especially you put somebody like that in like an uh, in an option, like like a wishbone. Yeah. And put him in there as an option player where you can either throw to him or have an extra blocker. Come on. He he had the size. He had the speed. But as far as being a pro style quarterback, he didn't have it. He did, yeah. and then, and he, and I, I do wish him the best because I think he's a good person. Now, what is this? That is a heart I burnt into our floor. Yeah, Misty was not happy about that, but I got bored. There is also a Ravens logo somewhere on that floor. Somewhere. Somewhere on that floor. Probably in the bathroom, right? No, it's right there. All right, well, that's where it belongs. Yeah, I play video games right there. And don't start. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mark of true friendship when you can go back and forth like that. There's your goat right there, the greatest of all time. Goat. Inside linebacker, Ray Lewis, number 52. He is defense. Mm. I, will, I, I, will, I will go as far as to call him greatest of all time linebacker. He is defense. Not, not, not quite. i got to go Reggie White. I'm not, I I plead the fifth because uh, as a Ravens fan. <laughs> well, we can't wait. Let's see. Let's see. Good, a good mark of friendship is compromise. I see. I'm gonna compromise by not saying anything against the Ravens. <laughs> can, can we? Can we compromise? Ray Lewis, greatest linebacker of all time. Reggie White, greatest defensive end of all time. Oh yes. Okay. We can compromise. Fair enough. We, we did. Fair enough. See, that's all it takes, people. Compromise. You know. I mean, I would love to give that to a, a Falcon, but have we ever even had a decent linebacker or end? <laughs> One play y'all had last year amazed me. I don't know who it was, but that stop. Automatically, I know who you're talking about. It had to hurt. <laughs> I, I can't remember his name. It was the power bomb. It was there yes. on the sideline. It was like an instant stop, and I'm like. And I want to say it was against oh. Pittsburgh, I want to say. Um, it wasn't Paul Warlow. I cannot think of his name, but it was. I think it was our safety. Or it might have been one of our linebackers, but he wound up power bombing. Yeah. Him, I can remember that. I'm, I'm seeing it in my face or, or in my head right now. But, yeah, that, <laughs> that was pretty epic. I was sitting there going, woo-wee. Yeah, me and my uh, stepson watched that play like 20 times. Misty got mad because I put it on her TV. Now, you got to understand, in our room, she has a 32-inch TV. I have a 19-inch. Yeah. I mean, that's 13 extra inches of awesomeness with which to view. 
Don't know, that's her TV. I should have that one. She should have the little one. But she is a female, and she runs the house. Yeah, so. I'm not sure how that would go at my house. I'm not even going to attempt that. Don't. I, I'm, I'm yet to have a fight with Georgiana, and I'm not going to spark one just to get it out of the way. <laughs> so, uh, But we, we do a good job of sharing. Actually, most of our time we spend in the living room watching uh, documentaries. We spent, like, all day, um, what was it, Sunday? We spent, like, all day watching documentary on Nazi mega weapons. See, I watch documentaries on sharks. I am big on the whole megalodon. I seriously think it could still exist. Possibly. I mean, you don't know down in some of them deep depths of the ocean. Find the Discovery Channel Shark Week megalodon, watch it. If that doesn't convince you that there might be something big out there, I don't know what can. Considering that there's a picture of a German U-boat with a fin maybe 40 yards away. Fin stood about six feet out the water. Oh wow! Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, we're putting at least a that's like what a seventy foot shark. And that's uh, not a whale, huh? No, that's not, not a whale. Wow. But yeah, the footage is very convincing. Like I've watched it time and time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to convince myself, no, it can't be real. You can't know? be. And then the more I watch it, the more I'm like, uh, yeah, it's very possible. That's why I don't go out in the ocean. Me neither, Bubba. Me neither. I'm not much of a uh, outdoorsman. How are we friends? <laughs> because we can reach across lines like that. <laughs> because yeah. we're we're nerds. We like comic books and video games and complete the fifth. Okay, I am. Misty, yeah, yeah, go ahead and laugh because she calls me a nerd all the time. In the I'm not into like Star Trek. That's and Star the title Wars. of honor in my home. Yeah, not in ours. <laughs> sad face. <laughs> yeah, sad face. Sad but face. We get along pretty well when it comes to nerd stuff. It's just that I think her stuff's nerdier. What would that be? Star Wars and Star Trek. I just... I'm into them. They're not my big thing. Obviously, everybody knows me. You know, Transformers is my big thing. Um, I would rank Star Wars over Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Don't listen to him. Seriously, you're talking to an action figure. You just did. That can't be proven. I have video evidence. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I'm not even here right now. You're imagining me. I'm... He's not looking at either one of us. Okay, cool. Awesome. There. Awesome. But I, I would rank Star Wars over Star Trek. I just love the AT-AT -AT walkers. They're camels. Giant mechanical camels. They're like transformer camels. You are not helping your situation. You're not winning this argument with me. It's nerdy. Well, I mean, when you go to Star Trek, my favorite thing about Star Trek is, is the Ferengi. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm lost. Oh, they're, uh... I just lost all my friends. Just so you know right now, just by this conversation, <laughs> The fact that I say I don't like Star Wars or Star Trek, all my friends are like, yeah, we're going to delete him off of Facebook now. We're not talking to him. Yeah, Rob is going to totally give you a noogie for that one. Oh, well. At least you didn't insult Batman. I like Batman. Rob Drown, you're awesome. Batman's kind of mean, but I like him. He is. Um, my, my favorite comic book would be Captain America. I love Cap, what he stands for. I, I like what Cap stands for. But as far as his comics, I just can't get into them. Deadpool, I love Deadpool because... Indeed. He's like me. He is the anti-hero. He's not good, he's not bad, but he is there to help his friends. I like the whole breaking of the fourth wall that he does. Which I'm waiting to see them actually faithfully reproduce that in a movie. Yes, because what we got in the Wolverine movie... Once again, I use profanity on my show. Uh. Wolverine, Wolverine, Wolverine. Let's get the counter up to five now on this show. So. Barbara Streisand. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice reference. Burn. Maybe, maybe we will one day because I, I don't know why the Marvel film universe sees fit to just totally swap everything around, but they do. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's not cool. With the Avengers, though, they, I actually like what they did. They did that 
that's probably the, their best work. Blade. That, that's probably the uh, most faithful reproduction, Avengers. Amazing Spider-Man's getting it. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it, I mean, at least we don't have another Ang Lee Hulk. Wait, was that the first one? Yeah, the 2001. Oh, no. That was painful yeah. to watch. Painful, painful. And I actually like Ghost Rider, the first one, not the second one. The second one, what were what were they on? Were they on? Were they overdosed on laudanum or something? I don't know. But I think that was PCP. But it it, it wasn't right. The first one I, I love. Yeah, the first one was good. Because I, I just I'm a Nick Cage fanboy. I love Nick Cage. Depends. He he has his moments, like everybody. But he does have his moments. Con Air, Gone in sixty seconds, Raising Arizona. Never watched Raising Arizona. Oh, you should. It's it's pretty good. No, no. Is it a chick flick? No. Oh, no. It's uh, actually some. It's actually more of what I would call a crime comedy. Really, they 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 find out they're infertile and they steal a baby. Okay, I'm not gonna trust you. You, <laughs> Raising Arizona. Good or no? Yeah, Coen Brothers, right? Yeah. Oh. I don't trust you either. I'm gonna listen to you and not watch it. It's got John Good. Wait. <laughs> I split. Told you he's crazy. We're going to fight. I'm just. Optimus Prime beats all, even Daryl Dixon. We are oh, this. no, don't, no. No, he doesn't. He does? No, he doesn't. Daryl Dixon needs a crossbow. He'll just transform and run over zombies. I'm about to cry here. This, that, that, that hurt. Logical. <laughs> you just diss Daryl Dixon. I'm not necessarily dissing Daryl Dixon. Just so you know, every female on your Facebook right now is like blowing up your page. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm probably going to get some hate mail from KP on that, definitely. Yep, you're on your own. But, I mean, in, in my defense, um, I'm not necessarily ripping on Daryl Dixon there. I can I can say that I like the Georgia Bulldogs better than the Atlanta Falcons, but that's not a rip on the Atlanta Falcons. It's just saying I like the Georgia Bulldogs more. No, it's telling the truth that Georgia Bulldogs will win more games. And they actually do have a couple of championships. <laughs> Okay, moving right along before I get skinned up more. KP, please forgive me. You're still cool. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll bribe you with a, with a taco or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I had to go to the emergency room the other day, and she come and saw about me. That was really cool for her. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> she is, you know. So, uh, you know, hopefully she'll let me slide. I might have to up it to a taco and some gummy worms or, I don't know, maybe a, a, a spa certificate or something. We'll figure it out. I might even have to buy her one of your cool glasses. To uh, be like, this is a peace offering. I don't know. Does that be dangerous for us to give her one? Yeah, it can be made into a weapon. Yeah. Moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Getting to my two questions. You found the awesomeness within yourself. What can you tell others about finding the awesomeness within them? The hardest part is to have a support system. You know, if you don't have that, then it's hard to get it started. Me, I've had the best support system when it comes from Mist Misty. Uh, John, Paige, my daughter, Kayen, and then actually Misty's ex-in-laws helped support me. And, you know, I had my own family, my mom, my brothers and sisters, and they pushed. And then I had my friends. You know, I have you, Rob, Leslie, Amber. And there's all these little things, you know, y'all don't even realize it. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Those little levels push you up. But in order to find it in yourself, you have to realize what you have and bring it out. You know, look around, try to find things that people like. First first off, I actually did try doing wood carving. Not that great of a market around here. I had some great That's work, great. which brings me to one point. This beauty is yours. Oh, thank you. Y'all been having trouble walking, so. She's, that will... she's dogwood and she actually shouldn't go anywhere. Wow. That is awesome. Wow. You no, know, you should see the paddles I carved. Really? Yeah. I took a 11 foot cedar tree and made four foot paddles. Like paddles or like paddles? Paddles. Paddles. Like, paddles. like the kind we can't really talk about on here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, nice. was a, it was a scare tactic and it actually worked. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, it can be used for other things, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Message this man on Facebook. <laughs> and then. Uh, my other, we're close to running out of time. My other question, who is your favorite Transformer? Mm, it'd probably be, oh man. So you put me on the spot with this one. What? I, I messaged you that one. Yeah, I know, and you're not going to like my answer. 
Go ahead. We, we have to do this. Cobb's going to be mad, but all help Megatron. You are the first person to not pick an Autobot. Right? And we've been through this. We have. <laughs> and, and I do actually like Megatron. I think he's a, he's a, he's a very deep and layered character. You know, his quote is peace through tyranny. Yeah. You know, which actually in a weird way does kind of make some sense, even if it's not very, <laughs> not very nice. I mean, you know, it, it actually would work. It wouldn't be the optimal solution, but it would indeed, you know, achieve peace. And, you know, Megatron is a cool character. I love the voice. Like Frank Welker's yeah. voice is iconic. Frank Welker does his. Hmm? Oh. Well, there you go. Frank Welker did him in the original. Um, and then Gary Chalk did him in Beast Wars, Beast Machines, and Robots in the Skies. If I remember right, I think it was Gary Chalk. Gary Chalk either did him or Optimus Prime, but I think he did Megatron. Hugo Weaving did him in the first movie, in the first three movies. I love Hugo Weaving. He's an awesome actor. And Transformers Prime it was uh, back to uh, Megatron. You know, Weaving was a uh, Red Skull in Captain America. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. And so we're, uh, I think we're going to have to conclude with that. Well, in, in honor of your, oh, did you want to have something you want to add? As much, as nervous as I was coming here, I'm going to have to come back to come hang out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm all so, for that, bro. <laughs> I told everybody I couldn't do it. I was afraid. I was literally, what? I was shaking, seriously, I was shaking on the way no, here. Dude. And I'm like, I should just turn around and go home. But I came here and it, I liked it. Well, it's I'm awesome. certainly glad you did, man. I mean, I'm all about having my friends on the show. I mean, what's the point in having something good if you can't share it with your friends? And Yeah, true. You know? And speaking of friends, uh, if you're looking for glass etching, I guarantee you nobody's going to beat my prices. You know, I don't use acid. I don't use stencils. It's all hand done. And considering I have one carpal tunnel and slice tendons, I'm not doing that bad. That's better than I can do with two good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Really is, but definitely get up with this man, do some work. He is CO double, he's CO double B approved. Awesome. CO double B guarantee. And uh, in favor of our friendship and my new gift, I'm going to close by saying, Thundercats, ho!